Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we're gonna go over spasticity. Now I know I talk about it a lot, but I get a lot of questions, um, people asking me my thoughts on various treatments for spasticity. So I thought I would do an entire series on it, kind of bringing together what some of the literature says along with what I see clinically as far as what's beneficial and what isn't. But before we dive into that, if you are new to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I post new videos. So now back to spasticity. I love talking about this condition because it is such a big problem. I love reading about it, so I hope I don't get too in-depth. I'm gonna try and keep it really understandable. If I use any terms that are really complicated, never fear, I'm gonna try and break each term down if I think it's a little bit too complicated, but I think it's really important to understand what causes spasticity so that you can be your best advocate when you are talking to your healthcare team as far as what the best options are for treatment, as well as understanding what's going on with your body can really help to decrease frustration and keep you motivated with all of the exercises. So what is spasticity? Spasticity is a movement disorder characterized by a velocity dependent increase in muscle tone due to hyper excitability of the reflex arc. So if that medical definition made sense to you, I'm gonna put a timestamp in the description below where you can just jump ahead to some of the treatment interventions that we're gonna get into. But if that seemed confusing, I'm gonna go ahead and break that down a little bit more. So let's take it apart piece by piece and talk about all the characteristics of spasticity that are in that definition. So first, it is a movement problem, so it's a problem with the muscles. It only happens if you have damage to an upper motor neuron, which is your brain or your spinal cord. It is an increase in muscle tone, and muscle tone is resistance to lengthening. So that should make sense for a lot of you who are dealing with spasticity right now. And that resistance to lengthening is worse the faster you try and lengthen it. So there's the velocity dependent. So the faster you try and, let's go with the bicep, the faster you try and straighten that arm out or the elbow flexors, faster you try and straighten that elbow out, the stronger the spasticity is gonna be. That's the velocity dependent component. The way I like to think of that is how a seatbelt works. So when it comes to spasticity in the velocity dependent component, it's very similar to how our seatbelts are. You're allowed to move forward, the seatbelt extends for you if you wanna move around, reach into the glove box, but if you slam on the brakes and it recognizes a fast lengthening like that for your safety, it locks up or it shortens. So that is similar to the velocity component portion of this movement problem. And there's an overwhelming consensus that it is due to a hyper excitability of the reflex arc. So the reflex arc is something that we have in all of our muscles and it basically occurs just at the spinal cord level for that muscle. So it's not something that ever gets back up to the brain, but what it is, is it is a sensor, which is a muscle spindle. It's a sensor in the muscle that senses lengthening. And when specialized nerves sense that lengthening from the muscle spindle, it will instantaneously fire another, trigger another nerve to shorten that muscle or contract that muscle. So that is a reflex arc and it just kind of is, it's real quick and it's real short and it never makes it up to the brain because it needs to be really fast. So a couple of examples of this is if you're standing upright and someone comes and pushes you to the side, that reflex arc will kick in because there's a, there's like a rapid lengthening of those, these muscles and it'll right you so you won't fall over, you won't tip over. It's extremely valuable, it's extremely helpful unless it loses connection with the brain. So I know I said that that little arc never makes it up to the brain, but if you can think of the brain as like a parent and that little reflex arc is like a child, when a child gets really excited, maybe unnecessarily or um, uncharacteristically or gets excited for the wrong reasons, the parent, the brain kind of steps in and inhibits that system with a 
injury to the brain or the spinal cord, you lose that connection, then you lose that, your body loses that ability to inhibit that, and that's that hyper excitability component. So again, spasticity is a movement disorder characterized by velocity dependent increase in muscle tone, passive resistance to movement, due to a hyper excitability of this reflex arc that's just kind of spinning out of control. So that is what it is and why it happens. There are certain things that make this more excitable or make this spasticity worse, and that is pain. Really any overstimulation, whether that's overstimulation on the skin, maybe you don't touch your arm for a while and then you go to touch it, that's overstimulation bright lights, loud sounds, infections, because that can be painful. Anything like that can make spasticity worse. But now let's go ahead and talk about what happens right after you have a stroke. So usually spasticity doesn't set in until one to three weeks after a stroke, but in a lot of cases that's just where it sets in. Spasticity a lot of times if left untreated will worsen over time. So two main reasons why spasticity might worsen after that initial onset from one to three weeks is disuse. So there's growing evidence that when you don't use a muscle, you lose it. That's a pretty common phrase, but where that occurs in the muscle is there's this sliding component to muscles where there's layers of fibers on top of each other and they kind of slide on each other. And that's how we get muscles to contract normally. There is growing evidence that when you don't use that system, you lose some of that sliding component. So you lose some of that normal contractility of the muscle. So disuse is one. And two is, is that the muscle just becomes shorter. And so with that shortening, you lose a little bit more of that elastic component. And also it requires less movement to initiate that reflex arc from becoming excitable. Now, if we're talking about a stroke or a brain injury, the most common spasticity in the upper extremity is flexor spasticity and that causes the muscles to become hyper excitable that bring it into the side flex the elbow flex the wrist flex the fingers and pronate so flipping the hand over so that is the spastic pattern that is most common in the upper extremity and the lower extremity there's actually two that are pretty common in the lower extremity flexor and extensor. I've seen kind of a mix. I've seen a lot of both of those. Extensor spasticity in the lower extremity is hip extension, hip internal rotation, knee extension, and the foot points. The flexor spasticity pattern is hip flexion, external rotation, knee flexion, and ankle dorsiflexion. So those are the spasticity patterns in the lower extremity. So that is a little background on spasticity. First, should you treat spasticity? I would say if we're talking about conservative treatments, which is what I'm gonna go over today, absolutely. There's no reason not to. When we get to some of the more invasive or medical treatments, it would be on a case-by-case -case basis. But the consensus is if spasticity is affecting your quality of life, then you should consider some of those treatments, which I'm not gonna go over today, but that'll be in the next video. Today, we're just gonna go over the conservative treatments, which absolutely, I feel like there's no reason everyone should not be doing some combination of these conservative treatments. When it comes to the medications and surgical interventions, considering those options, you should be a little bit more thoughtful. And I will go into that when I get to those types of interventions. But for today's video, we are just gonna go over more conservative treatments, ones that don't involve medication or any type of medical procedure. Now let's get into the treatment. This is the question that everyone has or a lot of people have and they all are you guys are a lot of you are out there searching for what is the best treatment. So first and foremost, that's probably the easiest is as I said, pain can increase spasticity is to try and identify anything that's causing pain and eliminate it. So that can be UTIs, bladder infections, bladder retention, um, in some cases, it could be like a button pressing into your skin, cold weather, basically remove anything that's causing pain or is overstimulating your system. 
two is stretching. This is extremely important. As I mentioned earlier, spasticity can worsen over time due to shortening of those soft tissue structures and some stiffness that can develop in the joint. So definitely, 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 stretching is extremely important. I'll post a video right here of some stretches that you can do for the upper extremity and another video right here of some stretches that you can do for the lower extremity. But stretch, 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 very important from the very beginning. Bracing is also extremely important. I see this mistake so often and it is the most frustrating thing for me to see that a lot of people have this idea in their head that if you brace something, that's a crutch or you're not going to get any strength back because you put a brace on it. If you have spasticity, remember that spasticity will get worse over time. But even more than that, that spasticity, even if it's only in one muscle, if you are walking and you have spasticity, let's say in the calf muscle, you are creating damage to the knee and the hip. There's no doubt in my mind if you do not have a brace on. So bracing is extremely important and can be super valuable. Now, of course, there's a whole variety of different braces, which I plan to do a whole separate video just on that, on what types of bracing are the best for what types of spasticity. So stay on the lookout for that because I'm going to go into different a knee brace and several different ankle and foot braces that help. But a lot of people resort to those foot drop straps. And if you have spasticity, a foot drop strap is not going to be enough. I can guarantee you, I have not found one on the market yet that will overcome spasticity in the muscles that point the foot down. So bracing is extremely important. So work with your physical therapist and work with your local orthotist to find the best brace for you. And then the next conservative treatment is E-STEM. The, the literature and the research, it's a little bit mixed out there as far as whether or not E-STEM can treat spasticity, but I will tell you what I see clinically when it comes to the upper extremity. Um, spasticity, even on a TENS setting, which is a pain setting, decreasing pain can definitely help to decrease spasticity. Also neuromuscular E-STEM on the muscles that oppose that movement, it works. I've seen it. So um, again, that, that research is a, is a little bit mixed out there, but I know that it definitely works. And always remember there's other uses for E-STEM. So it might not be for the spasticity, but let's say you have a sublux shoulder and you have spasticity, definitely E-STEM helps with that subluxation. So in that case, you should definitely use it. So just because the information or the literature is mixed on whether or not it treats spasticity, don't throw it completely out of the question. And then acupuncture, definitely effective. And there's a variety of reasons why acupuncture works. I will say that um, if you don't believe in it or you don't buy into it, don't waste your money because then it's definitely not gonna work. But there is definitely some physiologic changes that go on in the body when you with acupuncture and again i'm going to do a whole separate video on that because that's kind of in depth as well but it's definitely an option so if you wanted to start with more conservative treatments maybe ask your doctor about that and get his advice or opinion on acupuncture and that is it those are probably the most common non-medical non-surgical treatments for spasticity if you're wondering whether or not you should do them if they're going to help yes no question in my mind. So if I show video with stretches in it, no need to ask me, will this help spasticity? At the very least, you should be stretching. I will post links in the description below of some of the videos that will show you some upper extremity stretches and lower extremity stretches for spasticity. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys found this helpful. Remember, there is gonna be a part two that really is gonna answer probably more of the more common questions that I get regarding medical treatments, baclofen, Botox, surgery, all of those questions will be answered in the part two of this two-part series on spasticity. 
So definitely look forward to that. If you like this video, definitely give this a thumbs up. I really enjoy this because the more you understand what's going on inside your body, the better you are. So if you liked this video that really wasn't exercises, but more breaking down one of the most common problems after a stroke, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. You hitting that subscribe button matters. And you hitting that button, believe it or not, helps my videos to reach more people. So definitely hit that subscribe button. If you wanna be notified of when I post new videos, turn on that notification bell, share these videos. Again, as I said earlier, I'm kind of a small channel, so the only way these videos get out to more people is by you, guys, you all sharing them. So I appreciate you that have left me messages saying you are sharing them. And now, if you are someone that is dealing with severe spasticity, hang in there. Don't give up. You're not gonna see quick results every day. It is more frustrating to be dealing with spasticity after a stroke, but not doing anything is not getting you anywhere. So at the very least, get up, stretch that arm, stretch that leg, and do what you can to just make yourself 1% better today. So maybe your 1% today is doing one stretching exercise or reaching out to one family member who can maybe help you with one stretching exercise or maybe your one percent today is just calling and setting up an appointment with a physical therapist so you can learn the stretches that you need to do or calling the orthotist and setting up an appointment to start the process of getting a brace whatever you do do something and i promise you there's no challenge in life that you can't overcome with the right attitude so again i thank you all for making it to the end and and until next time, you all have a great day.